live on Facebook. <laughs> Thursday. Yeah. Very exciting. Um, I'm gonna make sure we're actually live on Facebook. That's what I'm gonna do right now. Um, how are you doing today, sis? I'm super good. I was thinking the last time we talked, I keep going like this, and I uh I feel like it's that emoji. Have you seen that? Emoji? <laughs> I'm the emoji. So I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I love it. We're feeling pretty sassy today. Huh? We're pretty, we're feeling pretty sassy today. I am. Well, it's been raining a little bit and we have some more rain coming, which is really fabulous because we're in a little bit of a drought. And I, mm, I saw that look on your face. I love the Pacific Northwest and all the rain. I do too. And I know we're in a drought and I know the rain is important, but I spent a week in the Utah desert basking in the glorious sun and I was like came back here and I was like oh my gosh it's 60 degrees it's lovely like oh. I love this weather uh we don't have sun's skin for sun in my family um yeah so I love the moody the misty the clouds clinging to the mountains and the trees the ferns so I love it all I love it all oh I love you <laughs> I mean, I feel like I have the skin for the sun, so there's that. You probably have better skin for sun than I do. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to change the view, the gallery, okay. so people can actually see both of us at the same time, because I just got over to the Facebook page, and I noticed that we were showing up as a speaker view, so mm -hmm. I think I changed it. Let's see. I did! Yay! Look at me go. Get a little dizzy in the way we talk the other way. <laughs> it gets a very yeah. like this. So for those of you who are watching, I fixed it. Yay. <laughs> um, darling Liz, yes, let's sir. talk about uh, what happens when you diminish your shine in business. Mm -hmm. So you and I were talking yesterday and about how when we first started this, you were like, I'm just going to be behind the scenes. I'm not going to have to say much. You're going to be the front, the front girl, right? Because that's what I do. Right. So here we are. And you're realizing that you don't get to diminish your shine in this process. Like this is one of your moments where you get to expand out of your comfort zone. I think that uh, I've spent a lot of my life, even though I am a big personality uh, in the real life, in thought online or anything. I think in real life, I tend to be a big personality and people that know me say I express my opinion pretty freely. <laughs> um, it has been, I've cried so much and I was I actually pointed out to you because I just did a, an interview with Laura Brandeo, which we just posted up recently. Um, I'm no longer getting bright red every time I'm doing these Zooms because I'm not quite as nervous as I was. So I'm adjusting slowly. Um, so I don't have a poker face and um, I get red at a drop of a hat. So um, so I don't do that anymore. I'm super comfortable. And I, uh, I realized that this whole conference thing and the messaging um, has to come from me and you. Um, even though I thought maybe I could just be the ideas and go, I like that content and I like that and I like that idea. Somebody go do that. It doesn't work that way. Uh, it, it's forced me to do this, this shameless self-promotion, so to speak. <laughs> so. You know, it's really interesting because we were talking about your career in mortgage and we were talking about, um, you know, your sales career and how you, that's where you're comfortable, right? Like you're comfortable yeah. helping do those things. And I think the thing that's really interesting as we've been interacting with people in the mortgage industry is that, you know, they get in their comfort zone and they don't, and these women don't think any bigger, right? Like a, for a lot of women, they're like, well, I really want to make more money or I really want to have my own company or I really want to whatever. And yet they keep staying in their lane. Right. And part of the reason we started this conference is to help women see that they don't have to play in their lane. Yeah. Out of their lane. Yeah. It, well, and this conference helped me because I asked to be an area manager. Right. Like I would have never asked to be an area manager um, had uh, I didn't feel a little convicted, so to speak, in my soul of not walking my walk. Right. So uh, 
I was always like, I don't like recruiting and it, I'm always intimidated. And I have this non-college graduate, small town girl, you don't know much about the world. You're never going to accomplish much in the back of my head. And what I realized is all I've ever done is lending or real estate related profession since I was 21 years old, before my oldest daughter was born. And um, it rolls off my tongue these days. I mean, you can't do something for nearly 30 years and not have it roll off your tongue. Right. And, um, and my experiences are valid and my experiences relate to other people. And so I thought, why am I just staying as a branch manager or sales manager and just producing? Why can't I help women do better at getting paid fair compensation and recruit fairly? And that was, that was a big jump for me. I, I listened with headphones on and refinished a dresser for four days to convince myself that I really wanted to do that because I did. And I was just in denial, like, oh, I'm just going to refinish this dresser and think about it. And, and it, it, to this moment, and Laura Brandeo and I talked about it, it doesn't get easier for the ask. Yeah. Uh, it's still scary to do the ask, yeah. um, but it's important to do the ask and to let your, what, what did I say earlier? Your freak flag fly, be you, boo right? Like just yeah, do that's you. you. Yeah. I think it's really interesting that you bring that up too, because, um, you know, I, as you know, I'm trying to buy land very large, you know, 30 to 40 acres out of, of the box, out it's of the box to engage box. in, in mm -hmm. regenerative and sustainable aquaculture and to decolonize the land and to create spaces where people can come and reconnect to the land and their bodies and their food. And so the Mermaid's Garden is awesome, y'all, for you watching. I'll put a link in the comments so you can go and follow us on Facebook and see our story. But one of the things we're doing is creating spaces for disabled veterans. And so when I first came up with this concept, I thought for sure, like, oh, we'll get a loan, no problem. And we're talking about disabled veterans and everything's gonna be great and dandy and fabulous. People love talking about how they're going to save the earth and we need to regionalize our food. And we're, we're like offering up this project on a silver platter and we can't, I mean, the, I keep running into brick wall after brick wall after brick wall. And one of the things that I've had to do is figure out my audience and who I'm talking to. And to some people I talk about, you know, regenerative, sustainable, decolonizing, you know, stuff and then to other people I talk about veterans and that's all I talk about and I've had to learn how to know who I'm talking to and that the approach is differently depending on who I'm talking to and that really bothers me because I just want to be me, me too. and 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 so it reminds me of when I was a lobbyist and I had to learn how to play the game and I love the game it's like my policy is my favorite game but I had to learn that for certain people, I couldn't have certain conversations, but I had to shift the way I was talking. Use certain terms or words. Yeah, you have to use special words. <laughs> and so um, one of the things that I'm excited about with the conference is that we're going to be giving women, they're going to be able to learn from other women how they talk and how to own their wealth and how to find their voice in as women producers and mortgage. And it really excites me that we're going to be giving people the tools to be able to do that. Yeah, me too. And I, I think one of the things you and I are running into in this conference, and I'm just going to call it out, is that a lot of people like to talk about equity. A lot of people like to talk about inclusion. And a lot of people like to say they pay or treat women fairly, but the numbers don't lie. They're not. It's just a lot of words. And a lot of the people who talk about it are not stepping up. They, it's almost like a, a scary conversation and I'm, I'm a bit of a Pollyanna and I'm super, I'm always so surprised that these people who are like, no, 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 we're all for it. Okay, well then let's do A, B, and C. And they're like, well, we don't think we have, we don't do things that way. We don't, we don't have the problem, not company A. Uh, so go on to the next one. Then you talk to company B and they're like, well, yeah, but not us we're great. And then you go to company you see, and they're like, yeah, this is great, but we don't need to help you because we don't have a problem. And I think that this is this, uh, the numbers are there. We're all unfair to women and minorities. They're like, there's, there's, there's no like spin or alternate story or alternate 
facts or we are all unfair to women and minorities in every category of life and finance is not any different. Um, and it has been. And people with disabilities. Yes. And I tiptoed in the beginning. We tiptoed through this conversation um, because the audience is mostly what I would consider on the conservative side, the majority of the time. Mm -hmm. And so it has been uh, a challenge to word things in a way not to scare people off or offend or think that we're like crazy ass feminists, right? Uh, burning our bra online and um <laughs> That'll never happen in my world. <laughs> uh, and so I find that I, I reference the fact that I like men a lot in our videos. I've done that before a number of times if you go back um, because I do like men. I have lots of male friends. I've married. Uh, however, uh, they won't be speaking at our conference because I don't know that they can explain or translate as accurately as the women that we've asked to speak at our conference. And I think it's really important for people to think about, like we're really starting to challenge the status quo and that makes people super uncomfortable. And that was the reason we did this. Like, I remember when you, came to you and did it and in the back of my mind, I did it, but I wasn't really ready to challenge. This no, and I, and I think we, we tried to play it safe for a minute and that's just not who we are. No. And so, for those of you that are watching this and for those of you that are following us and for those of you that are really thinking about how do you own your own wealth, find your voice, stop diminishing your shine and really start to engage with women in the mortgage industry and in leadership outside of the mortgage industry, how can we really change this conversation and take the risk to ask for everything that you want? And uh, the comfort level of this conversation depends really on your background and the generation that you're from, I want to add. So uh, if I asked my 25-year-old daughter to talk about feminism, uh, it would be completely different than what, it would be different than what comes out of my mouth and different than what comes out of my mother's mouth. So we want nobody, if we get a little, if we get a little feminist on you, um, we don't want to scare you away. We just need to acknowledge that generationally and culturally, it's going to sit differently with everybody. And our goal is not to offend. Our goal is to bring everybody together and go, what makes you excited when you get up in the morning to do your job? And where do and you- And that's actually what feminism is about, is bringing people it is, together. It's essential. It's but I do feel like we have to explain that a lot. I think oh, we need to emphasize that if you're not a super feminist, bra, bra burning, Gloria Steinem, march in the streets, the women's march in DC kind of woman, uh, no pussy hats for you, that's fine. You're welcome to come and join the party, right? Uh, and, and anywhere in between. But we well. aren't those kind of women either. Like you and I and the people that we're bringing in are people who are talking about real situations in the financial industry. Yes. The women that are talking are gonna be talking about how do you work within this, this system and how do you disrupt it enough to get what you want? Because that's where we're at financially as women. We are the ones who are like, okay, well, you know, this isn't working for me. You know, I had a conversation last night with a woman about um, FHA and VA loans because she's been told by her realtor that she needs to go conventional instead of FHA, even though she totally qualifies for FHA because it's too hard and you know those people hmm. sellers don't like those people i.e poor people who use fha or va right poor because poor because so those of us who are trying to use the va loan something is wrong with us and we had this conversation and i thought god wouldn't it be great if all these women who are coming together for this conference could have a real conversation about what happens with FHA and VA home loans and the judgment that is passed against the people that use those loans? Listen, I want to choke when I hear you say that. I would hope that nobody would ever tell people that about FHA. That people. is what is happening. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I am part of a new loan officer group on Facebook. And the question was asked, 
uh, what's the minimum credit score uh, for an FHA loan? How can you go? And uh, a gentleman jumped on and basically shamed anybody that had a credit score lower than 600 and said nobody's worth uh, doing a loan for. And I just... I just want to hope that we come from a more uh, inclusive and loving stance around people. It is our, uh, it's my belief that if you um, suffer from a bad credit score, chances are you just don't know how it works. Um, And uh, I think that um, women can bring a lot of times a little more sensitivity to the topic and subject, not to say that men aren't capable, there's that little disclaimer. Um, But I think um, that, I think it would be good if us women came together and we came from a feminine, motherly, uh, wise aunt, um, grandma baking cookies kind of standpoint in a way uh, in a loving, uh, wrap your arms around people and, uh, share. And, and we do that with each other too. It's all about connection. It's yeah. all about you not know, fighting with each other and figuring out how do we do what's best for our community. Yeah. And that means that we make sure that people, regardless of background, have the opportunity to have safe and affordable housing. Well, we need to talk to everybody like there are children and hopefully you're talking to your children nicely. Um, <laughs> So and I, we have to talk. We have to talk to people who want to buy a home and say, "Here are all the things you can do to get to that place." Well, but we and, also have to be willing, as women who are working in the mortgage industry and women who are having these conversations, to look at our own biases and look at our own diminish how we diminish ourselves and our shine. Here comes here comes the term, uh, appropriate internalized misogyny. Yes. Um, also this idea of being polite and demure, it, 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 no more. Listen, I smile a lot. It's something that I lucked out in life as a woman, uh, cause I'm a smiley person and, um, that has gotten me a lot of places that I probably, uh, my daughter wouldn't go cause she doesn't smile a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, I, and, and I think that all of these subtle things just need to be acknowledged and we need to do it within ourselves. We do need our male al- allies, right? Um, well, I mean, we're not talking about alienating people. We're talking about bringing people together. And I think that's what makes this mortgage conference very different. What mm-hmm. makes it different is we're not talking about, we are talking about raising the level of conversation to a completely different place where people are dare not to tread. And that is what we are doing. And it is time for that. And it is time to disrupt people that way. And so I'm really excited about it. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to belabor the points too much. So um, I have put the link to the conference in the comments and I'm hoping that people will go on. Tickets are on sale now for 145 bucks. So you can reserve your place. We're also looking for sponsors. So if anybody wants to sponsor, we're looking for five bronze level sponsors and four silver level sponsors. So Wait, nothing, nothing says I support women like sponsoring an exclusively women speaking organi- uh, conference, right? Like uh, I, I still fail to see um, why these companies don't think that they shouldn't be sponsoring this. Yeah, it's bananas. And um, so for those of you who are watching, if you know any companies who support women and support women owning their wealth, regardless of whether they are in the financial or mortgage industry or not, or if you're a real estate agent or mortgage person who wants to support the conference, then let us know and you can DM us and send us a message or just get on, click on the website and you can sign up. Yes. Thanks, Missy. Good to see you. Good to see you too. You have a fabulous Thursday. You too.